on this thing. You have to help. Okay, I think we're good. All right, now wait, we're not done yet. So we're going to try and uh, screen share. So there is. Uh, well, what we're going to do is share your presentation. Check it out. So people aren't going to be able to see you. Okay. Hello, people who aren't, can't see him. But what you will be able to do is watch along with his presentation. Okay. And so. All right. So it's all right welcome to talk talk number three. Three hundred three hundred thirty-three. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, and so then, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah, put one on the other. So yeah, Koki from um, ICT, and uh, you presented this as a 20 minute presentation. Yeah, year? actually it, it was 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Yeah. Now it is the luxurious time of 52 minutes because <laughs> we're starting all the way. Um, okay. Now uh, I'm mean, also so you guys out. Uh, on the Vancouver coast. Forty minutes for questions. <laughs> so this is Koki. There's Koki for you guys. Uh, okay. I, and what uh, we're going to do is just point this camera right at the screen. And then hold on, we're not done yet. We're going to see a better view than that. So this is it. since he's running off his laptop it's not like you can rgr into this so once again sorry about the weirdness but it's um, actually not too bad um there that's not bad there's a little bit of parallax obviously but, okay uh, yeah um how can i make sure so if i use this uh, presenter mode I shared the screen with Google Hangout. Oh, that's okay. They'll that's see okay. that. They'll see your screen that you've got. And so they'll see some of your notes, but that's okay. 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 Yeah. We're not going to worry about that. Okay. We're all kind of the top that. Yeah. Okay. So good to go. All right. So, yeah. yeah. Tell us how to, to do this micro screen structure. Okay. You do, you do, you do times. Okay. So, this is a chalk talk. Three, three, three. Exciting. Uh, so this is uh, the presentation is based on a paper presentation that I did in uh, early uh, August. Uh, this is so the material is kind of rather uh, formal, but I like the interaction. So if you have question, feel free to interrupt me. And um, so I think think of the uh, prefer is uh, like a. But this is, uh, I think, going to be make the smallest uh, deformation in the chalk talk history. So uh, we're going to start the uh, talk. So uh, this is how we begin the talk. So this the square in the picture is 25 centimeter wide, and the almost uh, entire face is in a square. The facial features of this scale, such as nose and jawline, determine the overall shape of the face, and they are called macrostructures. Entering and visibility is four than five wrinkles and uh, five, five, five centimeter. They are in the order of what I call mesostructures. And we're gradually approaching to the destination of the talk, the skin surface. Uh, yet another here. So still keep it sales, centimeter. Uh, still keep in the final level details and hundreds are a different level approaching about a hundredth of a millimeter and those um, fine division millimeter and this is our thing today uh, and you start to not just that the uh, facial rendering uh, made with uh, a light stage uh, 4K mesostructure compared up in the middle. Uh, it's missing a uh, high frequency uh, speaker uh, detail in the photograph in the middle. And um, so, in several years ago, um, we started the predecessor project of uh, today's talk, uh, which was to create 
uh, 16K by 16K scheme microstructure displacement map. Uh, looks like this, uh, rendering this looks like this. And the scheme microstructure uh, basically breaks up the specular surface details and, uh, and then uh, it provides uh, more like highlights, for example, on the cheek or uh, top of the nose, tip of the nose. And it produces more faithful specular rendering similar to the photograph. So we did all this uh, so we, uh, Alex Mairo proposed uh, a polarized spherical gradient illumination technique. Uh, from the polarized uh, polarization difference images, we can separate uh, the high frequency uh, specular details and also the uh, soft diffuse component. And um, and then they use uh, specular photometric stereo to increase uh, the resolution of the base mass, which was created from uh, this uh, light uh, structure, light pattern, uh, to inc incorporate uh, poor level uh, surface details. Right. Okay, so this uh, the method also provides uh, surface and surface reluctance, and uh, which allows you to simulate both uh, specular uh, high visibility surface details and also the soft angular uh, variation in a surface subsurface uh, scattering. Uh, together, we call the hybrid normal rendering, and this can be real time. So later, uh, Gosh et al. extended the technique was presented in Seagraph Asia 2011 uh, to multi-view covering the face from ear to ear uh, using the lots long uh, uh, knee position. And this- uh, pause just for a moment. Okay. I know you're on roll, but um, I just want to look at Google Hangouts. I got okay. a report that something is not working as well as it should. Okay. They can hear you. Where's your mouth? Okay. Uh, oh, there it is. Um, sorry for the delay. Uh, Chrome. Uh, no, Chrome. So, oh, present to everyone. Oh, you're, this, you're, man, Google with its stupid. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Oh. Back to my presentation. Mm -hmm. Is it working? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so this is a technique uh, we did scan, a static uh, skin patch scanning. Uh, we have a light stage. Also, we have a camera with the macro range, which basically allows you to have a one-to-one -one, uh, pixel uh, matching and over about two centimeter by one centimeter skin patch, we can achieve about a five to 10 micron resolution in the scanning. And um, after the scanning, you, uh, this is uh, some of the data we can get. The top row is the surface normal and you can get the displacement uh, from the normal by integrating the displacement. And uh, there's there are two things to note about this uh, scheme. The first A lot of variation and uh, the face, the same subject. More interesting is that there is a kind of a constant texture pattern uh, on the same region across a different subject. But, uh, for example, the forehead tends to move like up and down, so it gives a horizontal uh, texture. It's like, it looks like a grid. This is a forehead. And you kind of see a similar pattern even on the different uh, subject. Uh, if it's in the same region. And um, uh, when I uh, process uh, this kind of uh, displacement data, I do kind of quiz uh, just for fun. I shuffle these uh, displacements in patch and I ask myself if I can uh, answer which patch comes from where in the face. And I, I usually can get uh, three, at least five, right? Uh, for example, if you look at the cheek, cheek, uh, tends to have some kind of a, like a white spot in the displacement, which is um, uh, some kind of convex uh, texture. And you can kind of see uh, on a different subject. Uh, the nose uh, tends to be kind of smooth, but it has like a big kind of holes, uh, bumps. And the temple has kind of similar texture to the forehead, but it tends to have more uh, diagonal. 
is usually the, the last one. I don't know. Uh, interesting data. So, uh, so about the topic. So this is uh, how we uh, recently created the microstructure for the uh, static neutral skin. So we have the original uh, light stage uh, uh, scan, which is in typically 4K to 6K, uh, which even with that resolution, at this uh, close-up scale, it looks blurry. And we also have a very nice, uh, very high details microstructure skin, uh, which is about 8 microns. So we've also prepared a blurred version of this uh, uh, skin patch texture. And then uh, we use the image analogy to create blood work and then transfer uh, the missing details to the light state texture. And by uh, this way, we can increase uh, the resolution of the light state texture, to, which is in uh, 4K to 6K to 16K by 16K for the whole face, uh, which includes the uh, skin microstructure, which is below 10 microns. So uh, with this uh, 16K by 16K microstructure, we can uh, create a very nice rendering on the right. Uh, it even kind of holds up at this super close-up scale. The microstructure breaks up the details even with inside the pores. And you can see the difference even at the uh, zoom out scale. It has more uh, speaker break up, breakups uh, on the like cheek or uh, nose region, and you can see the difference even better in a uh, uh, specular channel on its own. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. It's, uh, it's, it's Google Hangouts. Yeah. Let's try one more time. Oh, look at that! They're all as oh. that. Okay, so that's not very exciting. So let's. I think we're looking at that one. Let's try this. Yeah. One. Okay. Present to everyone. Yeah. For what you are screen sharing. Yeah. Okay. You are screen sharing and presenting to everyone. Okay. Maybe. All right. Okay. That looks better. Yeah. What happens if we go to the next slide? Yeah, let's, let's check the Google. Okay, I think, yeah, Ooh, it's working. Okay, okay, nice. Okay. okay. All right. So, so in the next project, uh, which is uh, this uh, Seagraph paper, uh, we start to look at what uh, really happened when the skin microstructure uh, uh, stretches and deforms, and this is a close-up photograph of the side of the eye region. And when the, when the face is at the neutral state, uh, it's relatively isotropic. And the face, when the person shut the, the eye tight, the, those microstructures compress and form very fine anastropic wrinkles. And then when the person lowers the eyebrows down, this is the forehead, again they turn to completely different texture. So the microstructures are remarkably dynamic and a notable aspect of uh, facial expressions. And their importance is such uh, surface uh, roughness change uh, can be even seen in the specular highlight, even seen from a distance. So uh, the next one be more uh, obvious. So the one way to look at the skin roughness is that it serves as the reserve of the skin surface area. Uh, giving the skin an ability to stretch and compress. So this, uh, thus the skin that deforms significantly, such as the cheek region like this, and the eyelid region is typically uh, rougher than the part that is mostly static, such as the tip of the nose. Uh, and when those reserve of the tissues are called into action, uh, they get flattened out, and as a result, the surface appears shinier like a balloon. So although the change is more extreme in the real balloon, one important observation is that stretching uh, flattens out other, other surface details and it makes the surface shinier. Whereas the compression uh, bunches up the surface and uh, makes uh, the BR resulting BR a bit rougher. Um, so in this talk, we'd like to model these dynamic roughness change caused by the microstructure deformation. So, um, in the end of the talk, uh, we see uh, this deformation in the face. 
This is now in uh, uh, offline rendering. But we have both uh, offline and real time. So to model these, uh, I'd like to show a three-step process uh, for the scheme microstructure deformation. So our basic approach is we approximate skin stretching and buckling by anisotropically blurring, sharpening, displacement, and we do all this uh, based on the measurements. And we first recall the deforming skin patch sequence and analyze uh, the change of the skin uh, roughness with respect to the strength. So then, uh, second, from the measurement, we fit our model, a deformation model, to the data. Uh, to determine how much we should blur and sharpen under a specific amount of strain. And then third, finally, and given a new facial animation, we compute the local surface strain on the, on the surface of the mesh. And then from there, we synthesize the uh, dynamic surface microstructure. And this is uh, our final result. So in the past, in the medical literature, uh, there's an interesting observation about the skin roughness, which is that the um, skin roughness exists as a reserve of the tissue, implying how much the skin can extend. And also there's an inverse relation between the reserve of the tissue, like uh, for example, if you have uh, some like room, uh, if you have some kind of like a bumpiness like, stored in a texture, like a skin, uh -huh. that bumpiness is like, a, yeah, an extent. Oh, okay. So the roughness, um, so, but you, if it's tight already, and it cannot stretch anymore. So there's a, a kind of effective relation between the amount of the stretch and the kind of amount of the reserve of the tissue. That's basically the uh, skin roughness. And uh, even later people used uh, this technique to figure out uh, how much strain is exerted on the skin patch just from the shine on the skin. Uh, this, is, this is like how people are in the medical universe Interesting. So in the graphics community, people have been working on capturing a BRDF and uh, skin uh, geometry. And the three scans and the data-driven approaches were employed to capture uh, even pore level details, uh, sometimes dynamics. However, the details that existing work can capture uh, is up to only the mesoscale, uh, which is still an order of magnitude away from the detail we want uh, in this work. So. Uh, in again recently in Gram 2013 work, also the gel site work uh, showed methods to capture uh, microstructures at below 10 microns. Uh, however, the methods only deal with uh, the static microstructure and, and cannot uh, are not directly applicable to the dynamics. So that our goal is to fill the gap in this domain. Okay, so we basically uh, take the basic setup uh, from the Gram 2013 work and we extend it, uh, the setup so that uh, we can capture the deformation of the skin patch. Uh, we share the uh, light stage and the macro photography and we have a, a opening skin aperture. Uh, this is made by uh, like 3D printing and we attach the skin firmly to the aperture using the double stick. Actually, this is how the medical literature people really? don't. Yeah, so uh, works great. Um, so then, every time we do scan, we dial in the this a micrometer, open and close about 0.8 millimeter. And then <clears throat> after the scanning, uh, we get a uh, uh, sequence of the reflectance, uh, albedos, and geometry. And the most uh, interesting data is the uh, displacement. So you can see the uh, when a surface is stretched, it forms very, very fine anisotropic wrinkles and in, when it bunches up. And uh, this is actually from a scan. This is, this is a scan. This is a displacement map. And this is about uh, two centimeter by one centimeter or so. This is the, uh, then, um, so if you start to analyze uh, the surface, uh, what's happening on the surface reflectance, uh, we tabulated the surface normal distribution histogram on the corresponding patch. And you can basically view this as a specular highlight. So when the surface is, uh, let's see, when a surface is uh, stretched, basically the uh, details are already flattened out and resulting a normal distribution gets very tight. And the skin also kind of uh, tries to preserve the area. So when it's completely stretched, it doesn't stretch anymore, so it kind of like tried to grab more 
surface area from side and it slightly compresses in the other dimension. And also, uh, again, when it's compressed, uh, it exhibits more uh, variation in the compressed direction. So this is kind of a very notable effect. And uh, you can kind of see the same effect consistently across uh, different skin patches in different orientation. So we have here, I think, forehead and cheek and chin region. So the effect is uh, even more clear when we plot uh, the stretch against the skin roughness. Basically, there is a clear inverse relation between the strain and the, uh, uh, the BRDF. And which is consistent with the medical literature work. So the goal is of our work is to uh, model the anastropic roughness change due to the skin microstructure deformation. And the basic approach of our, of our method is that uh, we directionally blur and sharpen 16K uh, facial uh, microstructure displacement in a direction of stretching and compression. So it is motivated from the observation that the skin surface the uh, cutting out the details and the stretch and compression and if you simply uh, just scale the surface uh, like on the on the bottom um, you have to stretch the skin like only a realistic amount to achieve the same level of hardness uh, to the ground truth so uh, this is our, our basic approach and uh, maybe I can mention some other approaches that we didn't get up and uh, approaches without everything, but every part of the skin was a possible. What was going on? Right, yeah. You can learn that, uh, how the surface statics, statics change and then. Our deformation model to get those statistics. The statistic is a, a roughness change, and also the maybe a procedure approach can be possible, like using GPU polling. Uh, it's not very easy to control controlling uh, the high frequency uh, skin-like texture at the same time, probably in a dynamic way. For simulation, I try like heterogeneous Mass mastering with special varying when um, bending. Um, some of them create a nice result, but uh, in general, they're kind of slow or very fat, very like extended to the whole face. Uh, but there's one useful thing uh, we learned from uh, this experiment, which led to the final solution, uh, is that um, so. Well, one span of time with uh, stretching the skin patch, eventually we convinced that the stretching is pretty much just flattening out the surface, operation to flatten out the surface, and compression is kind of operation to uh, bunch up the uh, surface. And if you uh, blur and sharpen the displacement on the stretching and compression, it kind of uh, get the uh, first order effect. So. Um, so I just want to say uh, the idea didn't come out of nowhere. <laughs> so it's uh, based on some uh, experience. Cool. Okay. So back to the talk. So we proposed uh, a convolution kernel. Also, uh, the image processing can run real time, so it's very fast. Uh, so we proposed a kernel for the skin microstructure deformation. Uh, it's consisting consists of a discrete delta function. It's strict return the original uh, signal and also the Gaussian filter and there are two basic parameters sigma and the parameters you come with the Gaussian or blur or uh, uh, 
blurring and sharpening. So we want to uh, find the kernel parameters alpha and sigma based on the measurement. And to do this, we find kernel parameters uh, by fitting uh, to the measurement. Since our goal is to uh, model the surface uh, dynamic roughness change, we find uh, alpha and sigma uh, that minimizes the difference of the simulated and uh, measured uh, ground source surface normal distribution. And by this way, uh, in theory, we can match the resulting BRDF in this uh, skin simulation. Okay. So the, the normal distribution function ground truth Mm -hmm. Right, so we measure uh, uh, in this uh, work uh, forehead, also the cheek and chin region. Okay. That's uh, we, we saw in the earlier slide. So, and then we can fit, uh, uh, train the model to uh, achieve the similar normal distribution histogram. Did you ever try with arms or? Uh, arms? I, no, we haven't, but uh, that's, uh, that'd be very interesting because. Uh, Is it the same? same? It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. I think more maybe. There's more like uh, more allowing maybe elasticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, there's uh, obviously uh, age variation. Also, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, this is a uh, yeah. We can continue. Okay. So then, if you do uh, repeat this process for like every increment of the skin patch, you can uh, get the uh, kind of uh, a plot between this uh, local strain, which is known from the measurement, also uh, the counter parameters. And then if you do some kind of uh, data fitting, uh, <clears throat> we just employ the linear segment fitting for the sake of the rapid lookup uh, of the parameter from the local strain, because this is uh, what we need to evaluate. Um, but if you uh, prefer you can do uh, non-linear like better fitting uh, if desired. So for sigma, we uh, do separate fit for the stretching and compression because uh, to capture the uh, the difference between different behaviors between the stretching and compression. Uh, there's a discontinuity. However, uh, we make sure the alpha goes to a zero at the neutral state to so that uh, animation still stays the uh, smooth. So basically, uh, when when it's neutral, there is no filtering, so we're fine. Okay, so now we want to. Why is there a discount? Meter? So uh, there is a uh, the stretching and compression has a slightly different behavior. Uh -huh. So we want to, and we can't capture this with uh, like just simple fitting, and also uh, we can make sure that uh, there is no filtering at the neutral neutral state. So it's kind of different fitting. Okay, so uh, so now we want to implement uh, the skin microstructure convolution, and we want to do it efficiently. So we assume uh, the 2D convolution filter is separable and sequentially <laughs> performs uh, 1D convolution uh, twice in the direction of a 2D anisotropic strain uh, in a UV space, and it can be done efficiently on uh, GPU, and you can simulate the microstructure uh, deformation by just uh, adding uh, two shader passes to the existing rendering engine. Uh, so I think it should be pretty easy to integrate. <clears throat> and uh, uh, maybe the process could be even simplified. Okay, so uh, now uh, we want we know the mapping between the local strain and the kernel parameters, and all we need to do to compute the surface strain uh, uh, is the last process uh, to animate the surface microstructure. So, uh, and here we can use the knowledge of the uh, chalk talk. We can pick up uh, previous uh, paper from previous talk and do uh, whatever deformation and uh, to get the surface strain on the uh, on the face. And uh, in this work, we uh, happen to use uh, we happen to compare uh, the uh, neutral triangle and a deformed triangle, and then compute the linear transformation and then uh, run uh, the PCA to extract it, the uh, the principal uh, 2D uh, strain and the angle. And we did this in the uh, tangent space. So uh, all the stress field is already in the uh, triangle. So then uh, we can interpolate the tri uh, strain from per triangle to uh, per pixel. And then this is a visualization of the first uh, two uh, PCAs uh, on the face, this is the first one, this is the second one, 
and this is a visualization of the angle. And so uh, now we're good to go to uh, uh, drive the surface uh, microstructure. And so we can move on to the result. The first example is the simple keyframe uh, sphere animation, sphere being twisted. So the left one, uh, on the both, uh, we have a high resolution uh, displacement map. And on the right, it is simply going for a ride uh, over the, on the sphere surface. And on the left, we are applying our uh, anastropic uh, surface blurring and sharpening. And and this process of a sense of a, a sphere being twisted. Yeah, one looks like skin and the other looks like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is really impressive. Uh, this one um, gave somebody uh, like the impression to a uh, picture like a uh, sphere. <laughs> but it's not, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the next one is a G-Shy skin patch example. Uh, this is a little bit creepy. Um, it's being pushed around with an invisible finger. Uh, the mesostructure structure is simulated with a relatively low resolution uh, finite element model. And we extracted the uh, strain field from the uh, finite element uh, simulation. And then that's driving the uh, surface uh, microstructure. And this is done with uh, P-Ray. Okay, so the next one uh, is the, uh, the, 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 the one where the audience, general audience is scared the most because we didn't have the eyes. Uh, so here we applied the technique to capture the blend shape animation. And 4K dynamic mesostructure is linearly interpolated between the expressions and the 16K microstructure is computed on the fly with a displacement convolution. So uh, this is also uh, done with a uh, hybrid normal rendering to simulate uh, the kind of uh, angular effect of the uh, subsurface scattering. So let's zoom in on the region. And uh, you can see the uh, simulated surface um, microstructure naturally matches to the captured underlying uh, meso wrinkles. And here we compare the rendering without the microstructure at all. And without a microstructure, with just mesostructure only, uh, the things look very blurry and look polished and uh, doesn't hold up at this scale. So with the static microstructure added, it provides a more details, it improves like a skin-like quality, but doesn't look natural when the underlying uh, structure is uh, significantly. And then when you simulate the dynamics on the surface, it provides a much stronger sense of the surface uh, being uh, stretched and it kind of enhances the expression. And we can compare, go back to an static and the dynamics looks better, I believe. And uh, we show the specular channel and so on, and you can see that uh, the surface roughness change on the side of the eye region is So is this all microstructure at this point, or is there? These are both uh, mesostructure and microstructure, and uh, like a lot of uh, stuff is still coming from uh, like mesostructure. Maybe for example, like, like medium scale wrinkles. Maybe you can uh, show like uh, maybe these like big pores. Uh, they're from the um, light stage mesostructure scan. Um, but these kind of uh, like a curve, uh, like a very fine wrinkles, this is a simulation result from the microstructure deformation. Okay, so the next one is the side of the eye region of a male subject. <clears throat> and we use the um, Gram 2013 technique to initialize a neutral microstructure. Uh, covering the whole face by 16K uh, microstructure displacement with 10 micron details. And the full simulation is uh, a little bit difficult. And on the, ha on the other hand, uh, this technique and OPS with the uh, uh, straightforward. And uh, we apply the technique to an older subject. I'm 
is distilled in young skin. Yeah. But on an older person. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so the next one is the uh, offline for facial rendering of uh, Digital Emily 2.1. Uh, so the Digital Emily 2.1 uh, is uh, like a collaboration with the Digital Human League. Uh, so the, uh, so we use a light shield scan for the face and the members in the Digital Human League model, uh, the eyes and the hairs, and we're using uh, some of the data set from uh, here. Uh, this is also available on our website, and you can uh, download the data. And the first one is uh, the brain shape animation. This is done with a V-Ray, that's one hour per, uh, per frame. Uh, this uh, like long shot with object space 16K uh, microstructure, uh, microstructure displacement as well as a 6K mesostructure displacement. And also with uh, subsurface scattering, uh, image-based lighting, depth of field, and such. So let's zoom in on the for feel the tension when MD pulls the... And uh, this tends to take longer in the rendering Took up to uh, three hour, two three hours. Okay, and the next one is uh, cheek, cheek, half the cheek. We can like a similar quality of the uh, cheek be getting shinier, uh, as we saw earlier in the photograph. And the next one, we can apply uh, the techniques to the capture the facial animation. Uh, the the mental structure dynamics uh, in this case is captured with um, Grum's uh, facial performance capture paper, which was uh, present. And on top of that, we're simulating uh, the microstructure deformation. And uh, you can feel more tension. Uh, Okay, so, uh, and then finally we did the validation to the real photograph, and the right, left side is a real photograph, and the right side is a, a dynamic microstructure rendering, and uh, you can see the anisotropic fine wrinkles uh, in the photograph are uh, qualitatively uh, well simulated in the rendering, and here we compare the rendering without dynamics, and in sets, uh, you can see uh, that with the dynamics, it matches better to the, uh, to the photograph. You can go back and you can compare the difference. And this is without dynamics. Okay. So one more example. Again, the left is a photograph and the right is the uh, the rendering. And overall, right, right the texture orientation uh, is kind of matching to the reference. Okay. So. There are some uh, limitations. Um, so since we filter the neutral microstructure, we can't uh, simulate the deformation on the surface. That is already completely flat. Uh, and also our model is linear, so we cannot differentiate the uh, like ridges and grooves to uh, get uh, this kind of uh, like volume preserving behavior that we can probably get with the uh, physics simulation. Or maybe there is some kind of a better filtering to kind of uh, get this kind of effect. Uh, for the feature work, uh, there are uh, possible ways to optimize the computation of the filtering. Uh, for example, we can like leverage the level uh, detail details uh, for the blurring computation. Also, um, for the more practical purpose, uh, we can kind of a uh, uh, leverage multi-scale BRG rendering for the uh, zoomed out uh, face rendering case because it's expensive to uh, render, use the 16K microstructure for the rendering. And also, uh, again, as I mentioned, it's it'll be interesting to uh, capture the past on specific models and test how well this model scales to different uh, end, uh, ages 
and genders and so on. Okay, so this paper uh, measured and analyzed the dynamic change of the skin roughness and the deformation, and we propose a method to efficiently simulate dynamic skin microstructure, which can be uh, efficiently implemented on GPU. And the, the skin patch data is uploaded to our uh, website, so we can download and play around with it. Okay, and so small shows, and thank you, dog. Oh, well, no, no, thank you. This yeah. is awesome. <laughs> Great. This is just great. Well, we have time for questions. Uh, Vancouver guys, were you able to actually see that? That, that looked pretty okay, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it looked good. Okay, good. Um, I have a question, actually. Okay. Bring it. Um, so you have to find different areas like for to, to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um When you combine all of those into a 16K texture map or displacement map, mm -hmm. How are you defining which parts of the face each will be on? How do you blend between them? Um, so uh, we defined some um, mask. Uh, uh, one of our artists created uh, uh, like a, a mask that defined like where is the like forehead and where is the temple, where is the nose, and uh, we propagate the uh, data uh, inside the mask and. And then we blend in the boundary region of uh, the different uh, patches, the different regions. What's the resolution of the mask? Uh, the mask resolution can, uh, mask resolution so has to be uh, uh, 16K by 16K. So we created uh, like a mask uh, inside the uh, 16K by 16K displacement. And then we, we have like in each region that we have the scan of the skin micro uh, skin patches, and then we do synthesis and then blending uh, the boundary smoothly using like this patch and this part. Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Did you um, did you do any uh, tests to see what the effects of makeup were? I think that's uh, very interesting. Uh, so this this is also um, so makeup. Uh, like particle, like a uh, foundation particle is so small you can see, but like all you can see the difference. So you do like scan with and without the makeup, and how mm -hmm. it just like a uh, change the like uh, the ratio of the scattering and the surface reflection, and also like how they fill up the pores and how they change the surface details. Yeah, because after this. Then we have to apply makeup, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to figure what, what, what that effect is going to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about uh, something that Graph you showed, and mm -hmm. that they can like, you know, help there on one of the parameters, and mm -hmm. you start to compress the direction. And I was wondering if that's visible the, as, as it transitions from this. To compression, if you have some kind of pop in the oh, oh, okay, that that uh, that one, uh, it's the me, uh, okay, oh, okay, so I think that was that, um, so the fitting, um, so so this is like where this, um, you're talking about this slide, right? This slide? This, yeah, this slide? Yeah, uh, was explaining here that uh, the, the experimenters are, you know, they are multiplicative, so the, the height, the, 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 the point in the, the center in the right side is high, but it's... Oh, high okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. No so th so the discontinuity is, uh, there is a discontinuity, but uh, uh, so there's... Uh, the parameter to control the strength of the filter, mm -hmm. and at the discontinuity, the filtering is, is zero. Uh, so there's uh, no like blurring, right. and mm -hmm. so it, the discontinuity is not going to be a problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you have the ground truth for that person 
might as well just calculate the stem search. Um, what else does it depend on? Um, so it depends on. Uh, so like in some sense, it depends on the like a mechanical like a structure, right? And then we are measuring the like a resulting strain, like that's kind of uh, contributed from the mechanical structure change. And um, this is this is how we measure uh, how this uh, this is this is this measurement is more like uh, how this uh, surface statistics changes. And uh, but we really want to um, build uh, like an anatomical model. I think we have to uh, know that like a mechanical properties of the phase. So um, at the beginning, we try to uh, kind of create uh, the exact geometry much. It's very hard because you have to know this the, like thickness distribution, mechanical properties at every point to get the exact much. So it was much harder. Uh, but it was, uh, uh, but it's it's it was much easier to like match the statistics uh, rather than match exact geometric match. Wow, I, I gotta say this is really cool, and it looks really applicable to what we're doing, right? Okay. So the data. So if we wanted to implement this. Mm -hmm. That we could go to your website and get yeah. the, the data. Yeah. And are the normal distribution functions there? Or? Uh, the like one of the uh, the function is in the paper, uh -huh. so you don't have to go to the data. So just uh, uh, add the blur, like one D blur, in the renderer. Yeah. And uh, compute the create some like a strain map. The strain map. Yeah, yeah we'll and then. Stream map will convert to the like a kernel convolution parameters, and then you apply the convolution on the displacement map. So, so I think that, that should be pretty simple. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, do we have any other questions? Yeah. Cool. Well, let's thank cookies one more time. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this was a brilliant presentation. That was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. All right. Well, let's shut down the Google broadcast. All right. Uh, there should be. Stop that. Hello. Bye. Hey. Bye, Google guys. Look, this is Koki. <laughs> and then we're going to say stop.